Welcome back to Bass Fishing for Noobs on the Paddle and Fin Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan, and today we got Josh Stewart on here. He was on here not too long ago on the Reel Down, um, talking about his recent, uh, I guess, his recent wins with the KBF. Uh, you, you, you got so many titles with that, so I, I can't, I believe you got first place in Pro Tour, first place in challenge tour and like second place in the trail is that right yeah that's right yeah yeah man that that's yeah, like were, just those combined events yeah that crazy. Was... All, all that and... yeah man that's congratulations on all that i, I know yeah, you thank you be stoked about that yes but, uh, uh, that was great yeah so we brought josh on here tonight and, you know See if we can uh, figure out how to fish from him. You know, maybe, maybe we can learn a little something from him. And uh, yeah, so welcome to welcome to Bass Fishing for Noobs, Josh. Glad to be here, man. Uh, yeah, went fishing today um, out at uh, one of our local TWRA lakes, uh, Trophy Managed Lakes. Um, didn't have much luck today, but uh, got a few just slow rolling and swim bait, just as slow as I possibly could. It was a it's a long six hours that I was out there, you know. Um, what, yeah, what? But, but mostly this time of the year, I really like to be on the Duck River. It's one of my favorite places in Tennessee. Oh, no. really? No, yeah. It's it's just in the wintertime, you don't see anybody on it, and there's there's a lot of good quality smallmouth on that on that river. Duck River, I never fish it. <laughs> you never fish it. No, I don't. But don't you live right beside it? Yeah, I'm, I'm like five <laughs> minutes down the road from oh. Henry Horton State Park. So yeah, you, you've been missing out there. It's a you know, you know it's one of the most biodiverse places in, on uh, in the world too. It's like up there, yeah. like places in in you know the South American rainforest. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how true it is or whatever, but I have been told that it's got more different types of species. Yeah, I believe it's a hundred than any other body of water. And I believe it's got 126 species of uh, freshwater water uh, fish and mussels, and a couple of endangered ones. So that's that's one one of the big reasons they don't dam, you know, dam the Duck River up between um, what's that lake? Um, not Normandy. Tim's Fort, Normandy and yeah, Kentucky Lake. There's been a lot of development around it. Yeah, but. The, ain't there a dam down in Columbia? Yeah, but they're they're. I mean, they're smaller dams. They're not, uh, you know, yeah, the big, yeah. to to build a lake. It's I think yeah, Columbia is the last one, I believe. Oh, so that kind of explains explain something to me. A buddy of mine I work with was talking about he he lives you know going towards Columbia. Yeah, and uh, he said something about they were supposed to build a lake out there somewhere at one point, and then they just stopped. Uh, I wonder. I bet that's the reason why they stopped. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, it has endangered species of uh, mussels in there. Yeah, now, now, I'm pretty sure there might be like an, you know, those darter fish too. There might might be one of those that are endangered. All right, all right, that makes a little more sense to me now. Uh, so you you said you were catching them on a swim bait today, or I guess here recently. Yeah, today me and me and Derek went out there, and um, we we're supposed to go to the Duck River, but it was blown out. And we usually like to go to the Duck River when the water's high, but we like to catch it on a uh, on a warm front. That way, the, the creeks will warm up about five degrees warmer than the than the river, and they're really just stack in there. It's unreal how much they'll stack in there if you catch it at the right time. Uh, what's your favorite like brand of swim bait to use? I mean, I basically like everybody's a Kitex, so I guess. All right. All right. Yeah, we, we hear a lot about the Kitex. I mean, I've, I, I still ain't used one I, yet. I got to get me some. I haven't really found any other ones that, you know, uh, swim as well as those. And I mean, when you're, especially if you're, if you're burning them or if you're slow rolling them, they, they still keep that action, you know. Well, well let's break down how you, how you do it a little bit are you uh are you using like a weighted hook or oh i use usually a jig head most of the time yeah 
Okay. Unless I'm fishing in, you know, heavy vegetation. Which then I usually just use a speed worm or something instead of a instead of a, a swim bait. Yeah, what what kind of setup are you using for your swim baits? Like rod and reel, line, all that good stuff? Um, I'm just using like a jig rod, basically, like a 7.3 jig rod, heavy jig rod, just with like a, a – um, I still use – I usually spool all my stuff up with 20-pound fluoro, and I just use that regardless of what I'm doing. <laughs> unless I'm unless I'm uh, fishing, you know, a spinning rod or, um, or you know, flipping or punching or uh, fishing with a frog, then I usually use braid. But All sometimes right. I, I like to use uh, fluoro too when I'm flipping a lot too as well. I just I feel like I get more bites. Yeah, something that I plan on trying this coming up year. I haven't done it yet because I want to upgrade my reels before I go putting a bunch of wasting a bunch of line on it. But I'm wanting to try braid to a fluoro leader because you know so many people talk about it, and I'm always talking about you know fishing on a tight budget. And yeah, it seems like it'd be so much cheaper just to change out a leader than. Yeah, I mean, that's, whole spool. that's what I do on my spinner rods. I haven't made the transition over yet from, you know, my casting rods. I know a lot of the pros do it now, but I just, that's a lot of leaders to be tied. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you're breaking off a lot. That's that's one thing. Thankful well, it's with, just, with the kayak. Just retying too. Yeah. Well, I, 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 tend to do that a lot anyways you know yeah i just make on my spinner rod I, make, I usually fish with a really long leader like 15 20 foot leader just to, i mean if you get it too long it can mess up your casting you can get wind knots and you'll get a knot in your leader where your leader's tied at but i like to keep a long leader on there just to help it sink so unless right. i'm fishing shallow then it really doesn't matter yeah that's interesting because a lot of people that uh use leaders you hear them they just do like the length of the rod well i mean if if i'm fishing you know 20 foot deep and i've only got 10 foot of leader and the rest of it's braid it's i feel like it's kind of killing that action you know because it's it's still it's still got resistance pulling the braid still trying to float that, that makes sense that's like that's you're the first person that i've talked to that uh that i can think of that said that it makes sense though um yes yeah, so uh so you fish kbftn correct yes i mean i fish i qual i qual i didn't qualify through state this year i got i got it it handed to me all year in uh kbftn by those guys and i didn't qualify for state so i had to hurry up and i had to fish like the last three of the clarksville ones to get into state all right but I mean, I've fished, uh, I've fished probably all the local clubs that I could think of at one point in time. Uh, how many are there? Uh, I know of two. There's oh, KBFTN and then you got, uh, yeah, like you got Cumberland. Yeah, they got you got the Cumberland kayak. That's the one that uh, goes on after our season's over with. I mean, you got a bunch. You got yeah. Clarksville. You got West Tennessee. You got. Tennessee Valley kayak anglers. You got Chattanooga bass anglers. You got like Central Valley Tennessee kayak anglers. Uh, so you really travel for these like sort of local. Well, yeah, I don't. I don't fish those as much as I used to when I first started. When I first started, I was fishing. I mean, if somebody had one that weekend, I was on it. But I fished a local. I fished a CV Central Valley kayak angler. Uh, one on Dale Hollow like two weeks ago, I believe. Or was that last week? That might have been last weekend. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yes, yeah, so for anybody listening to this, this will come out the the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Um, but, but this, you know, the Friday after Thanksgiving, you know, KBFTN, they're having their little boat ramp beat down that day. You going to oh, yeah. be there? Yeah, possibly. Depends on if I'm in town or not. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to. I've never fished a tournament before, so I, I was going to try to pick your brain about Percy Priest a little bit. <laughs> Percy Priest, uh, Yeah, I, I just, believe it's going to be drag, around like Fate Sanders and... Uh, shaky and, Head, uh, Shaky Head, and Drag a Jig, Slow, and uh, maybe a Swim Bait or a Rig. 
Have, have they been uh, staying pretty deep from what you've seen? Well, uh, I haven't fished it since the uh, that Cumberland track trail. Um, okay. And that was before I went to Wachita, so that's been... Yeah, it's been a little bit. It's been about three, four weeks ago. And I caught them real shallow and on, on a chatterbait then. Because I found some grass, but they were all small. I mean, everybody was having a hard time catching any size. All right. Well, that right there leads me to another question. Uh, you know, I hear people t talk about fishing grass all the time. The areas that I fish, I usually don't see a whole lot of grass. So when you actually get out on the main, you know, I, I fish uh, kind of more on up into the creek and Stewart's Creek or, you know, Stone River a lot. It, when you get out on the main lake, is there more grass out there? Um, it's, it's, it varies year by year. I mean, there's been a lot over in the uh, like Elm Hill area, over by Cook's area. There's a lot of that. Um, uh, it's not hydrilla. It's uh, it's not eel grass either. I don't. I'm, I'm. I'm not even sure what it is. But it's, it's, it's like eight foot deep out there, just solid grass. Oh uh, what? See, I, I. That's what I really need to do. I need to get more out on the actual lake. Damn. Yeah, see, that's my favorite. My favorite place to fish on Priest is towards the dam. I feel like the bigger smallmouth live there. Yeah, I'd be scared to get too close to the dams. Be scared to open it up, open up, and pull me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, 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 one thing, but I've had that feeling being under one before. You know, <laughs> like he's just, oh he's, yeah, open up and the water just like, pour on you. <laughs> it just you, you see a crack forming and. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's it like a horror movie yeah I, was, I, was, I went i was in alabama the other day and i went down and fished below chickamauga dam and um i just caught a bunch of uh those what they call them wipers white bass or whatever it was, it was like one after the other but i didn't catch any smallmouth i caught a big drum he he fooled me most definitely like a 10 pound drum <laughs> Thought you done caught a hook, uh, caught a huge smallie. Huh? Yeah, I thought I had a seven pounder on. <laughs> until, I, until I felt him roll, keep yeah. rolling. What, what's your personal record, smallie? Oh no, I don't even know what poundage is. I've I've caught a twenty-one and a half out of the duck. That's probably my longest. Out of the duck? Yeah. Hey, you're making me want to go up there a little more. Like I I know it that it's known for smallmouth. But it's got some. It's got. I've never seen a whole lot of size it. come out of there. It's got big ones in it. We we didn't catch that many big ones last year for some reason. I do not know why. But usually, uh, usually when we go, somebody catches a twenty at least every time we go. Man, I, and, but you're you're more t towards the Columbia area. Well, so like that, I, I I caught that one uh, just south of me in um, uh, Bol no, just south of me like. Just south of uh, like Christiana area, I forgot what the, I forgot what the road's called, Mullard's Bar or something maybe. Yeah, just south, of, like thirty minutes south of Murfreesboro is where I caught that that biggest one. Okay, so so more towards Normandy Lake. Yeah, but okay. not 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 to War Trace or not even to Columbia yet. And there's a lot of good fish in there. There's big little there's big largemouth in there too. Yeah, I actually caught my very first bass out of uh, out of Duck River. Yeah, true I love story. That. I love the duck. That caught it, caught it off a jig from the bank there at uh, Henry Horton State Park, right there below the bridge. I haven't fished that much of that area. But I fished it maybe once or twice. I really it, love the duck. My other favorite areas, um, I mean Kentucky Lake's probably my one of my favorite. That's a place I still need to go to. I, I haven't tried out Kentucky Lake very much. That things around Nashville that I like to fish, like Cheatham Lake. It's really, it's got a lot of good bass on it. And nobody ever talks about it either. It's got, um, especially when the water's up. It's got a lot of backwater areas that are really good, and the water's warmer. Uh, yeah, I've, I've never fished there either. I, you know, I haven't traveled too much. You know, I'm south of Nashville and everything, so. I haven't traveled too much. What what I tell everybody is, you know, why would I travel to go fish somewhere when I can't hardly find fish where I'm at? <laughs> yeah. 
Well, sometimes they're you know they're biting better other places than they are here. So yeah, that's true. That's what I try to wake up and think if I'm going fishing is like, what's going to be biting? Where are they going to be biting? They're biting in these creeks because I have a bunch of like little creeks that I like to go to. Are they going to be biting on the river or in the grass? I I try to make up my decision, especially if I'm fun fishing. You know, like right now, if I wanted to really go fun fish, I'd probably go to Dale Hollow and try to catch a you know a trophy smallmouth. Yeah, Dale Hollow, it, it was definitely a challenge for, for me up there uh, when we went because the conditions were just so much different from what I've seen around here. Yeah. Uh, it, the wa- One, the water was real low, and then you got all these steep banks and not a whole lot of, of uh, wood laid down, and I'm used to fishing around the wood, so. And I ain't used to fishing grass. But. You're, just look, you're just basically looking for like certain incline of banks, like the ones that have like those 45 degree angle banks and bank transitions and stuff like that. And mostly out towards the main lake too, like the mouths of the creeks, especially this time of the year. That's where I usually would go. But those fish on Del Hollow, I mean, they're, they're so hard to follow in a, in a, in a kayak because those fish move around a lot. Yeah, that. That's one of the downfalls of a kayak, you know. I, I don't see too many of them. I I think I'd still rather be in a kayak than a boat, but that is one of the downfalls. I mean, the last time I fished out of a boat, the whole time I was thinking, I was like, damn, I wish I was in my kayak. Because <laughs> when, you, when you, got three, you got like two or three different people on the boat and they're all looking at this, you know, different way of go, going, you know. It's all three of you guys out there in a kayak. You can just, you can just split up. Yeah, that that's one of the things that I tell people I love so much about kayaking is, you know, I don't have to worry about, you know, I, I had my own like John boat for a while and with a kayak, I don't have to worry about the person in the back of the boat, yeah. whether I'm setting them up to where they can get a good cast and all that. Don't have to worry about well, they want to go over here while I want to go over there. Ain't, ain't going to worry about that. You know, I can go where i want they can go where they want they exactly they charge a position in themselves you know that's what i love about it i, I, lo- I just I love, that. I love the ease of it too i love the ease of it i love the, the low maintenance <laughs> yeah exactly you know my boat i had i just had a trolling motor on it so you know i, I didn't really have to worry about you know tuning up a motor or yeah. gas in it or nothing like that but it seemed like every time i was gonna go out i had to do something to it like yeah. something was like needed worked on which my boats were like 1970 something model boats so yeah they were older but, but uh what what's some of your other techniques that you like to use I mean, I basically throw a jig all year round. I mean, that's one of my number one baits. The, I guess everybody knows the Cinco. I mean, I throw a wacky rig all the time. Not right now. I mean, it's I think that's uh, completely died off until springtime. But um, in the wintertime, I really like throwing just like single swim bait or a um, like an Alabama rig, like like a hog farmer BFL rig here in Tennessee is part of my favorite one. Okay. Would would you say, you know, with the weather we've been having, would you say that we're still in the fall, or would you say we're kind of more in, in the winter when it comes to? I mean, the tip of, the water turn. temperatures are dipping down into the low fifties. So I mean, that's that's getting pretty wintry for uh, Tennessee. So I, I mean, it's the colder it gets, the more you know those bait fish are going to get grouped up, and the more that a rig is going to play a role in catching, you know catching some good bass all right yeah see i i don't have a good fish finder on my kayak yet so i don't know what the water temp has been or anything like that so. oh let's say i mean you could do that you know when it's warm outside but when it gets cold it really really helps to have a fish finder yeah I, well i actually just got one i ain't got it set up yet so i i, I once I get that set up, you know, I should be all right. Hopefully, yeah. once I yeah. learn how to read the thing. <laughs> I mean, the biggest key for the winter winter time for me is just you just got to go slow, painfully slow. <laughs> yeah, that that's another thing I keep hearing. Hey, that, that's going to be hard for me because you know I 
I guess I, you can consider me more of like a power fisherman type. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't, I don't like moving too slow, you know. I mean, it would be nice if it was like that all the time. Yeah. If you could do that yeah. all the time. Yeah. We, we need to go to Florida. You can probably keep, keep it moving pretty good down there. Still. Well, unless they get a, a cold spell, then you can't catch them regardless. Those Florida bass, when it gets cold down there, they get locked, y'all, hardcore. Yeah, uh, somebody was saying not too long ago, I forget, it might have been on Instagram or something, saying that the, I think they were from Florida, and they said that they just shut down on them one day when they went Oh, went yeah, we, we had the, the, the 10 event, I don't know, three years ago in Bienville, and um, I believe the water temp was 34 degrees on – uh, down there in florida and i mean it was so hard for anybody to catch a fish i think one per one or two people had a limit it was it was rough man uh, the 10 event i you know i haven't fished kvf or or anything like that yet so it, the 10 event is that the one where there's like top 10 anglers yeah it's, it's been it's been held every year on i mean at bienville plantation down in uh, white springs florida but uh this year they're holding it on the uh, how do you say it? Kim, i always say kiss me but i know that's not right it's kissimmee there we go on the kissimmee <laughs> kissimmee chain the kissimmee chain down there i mean i've never been there but i'm pretty excited just hoping that we don't catch a cold front it seems like every year that we go down there, the weather's nice the week before we come down, and then it's just this Arctic chill runs through the area. Yeah, ho hopefully it'll be some good fishing. You know, I, I'd, I'd like to see, you know, with with the top anglers in KBF going against each other, I'd like to see where people were wearing them out and, you know, just a, yeah. a good yeah. back and forth fight. I mean, yeah, I mean, you... They put us down there in the right time, but I mean, you can't predict the weather, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely true. I mean, they're they're putting us down there, you know, in January in Florida. That's, you know, historically a good time to catch bass, but it seems like every time we go down there, just this weird cold spell comes comes with us. <laughs> well, well, hopefully this year, you know, y'all get better luck. Or, I mean, if they don't bite, maybe. I can be the only one that's catching them. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I feel you, man. Uh, that that swim bait. I know, I know you. I, I can't. I know we talked a little bit before we started recording, and uh, you said you were letting it hit the bottom and moving it slow. Uh, but I, I can't remember if you said about how how deep you've been trying to go with it. Oh, today the water temp was about. 52 degrees and those fish were in 15 to 20 foot of water so i mean so i've just thrown so let it sink to the bottom and just slow as i could just barely really back in and that's when it would get hit all right i mean i mean they'll they'll crush it too so if i'm going fishing tomorrow i need to go somewhere and get some contacts before i go out <laughs> Yeah, I would say I like using those, uh, the Easy Shiners, like the, I think they're five inch Easy Shiners. They're not the fat swing impact. I don't like using those that much in the wintertime. I feel like the, um, the Easy Shiners, uh, the action's right for the wintertime. It has that wider wobble, not that tight wobble like those fat impact have. No, it, I haven't used any yet myself, so I'm, I'm not sure really which ones to get other than you know the little bit i've talked with people on here about it but uh and get some if you can get some mended too i mean that really saves a lot of money some what now some mend it you ever heard of mend it i haven't well it's like a glue for uh soft plastics well i wouldn't hmm. say a glue it's like a some kind of adhesive it smells like um it smells like the cement what's that stuff that cement glue or whatever it smells like that but i mean it really it just it com it binds the bait back together and it's it'll stay on your hook better than it did before you even put it on there the first time it's really good stuff huh 
Yeah, I've I mean, never heard about this. It it'll basically pay for itself too, and you know, a couple of a couple of fishing trips. Because I just take all my old swim baits and I throw them in my little cup holder, and then when I get home, I mend them all back together and I use them out on the next trip. Huh. That's that's pretty cool. Where where do you get that stuff at? Uh, mostly online, but I know uh, tackle. What's that? Tackle warehouse. Tackle warehouse sells it. Yeah, but um. That place in Murfreesboro here that just opened up. Uh, hook one? No, they don't sell it. Uh, it's not a chain. It's not Dick's, not Academy. Sportsman's Warehouse. So oh, okay. We just got one of those like a couple months ago. I, I was wondering if that was new. I passed by that, and I was like, I've never well, seen that Well, yeah, you, if, if you don't drive through Murfreesboro in a month and you come through, there'll be like 10 new things in there. <laughs> yeah. It's getting, yeah, it's, 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 it's getting crazy. Yeah, it's definitely a growing town, you know. But, uh, I mean, I guess I guess that's good, you know, for for the economy around here. Yeah. It's definitely booming. Oh yeah, you can't hardly drive through Murfreesboro. I, I hate even coming into Murfreesboro. That's <laughs> why right, so I I live I don't have to go through it that much. I live right pretty close to the interstate, so I just pop on the interstate and Either hit, you know, 840 north or south. <laughs> or gotcha. Yeah, I, I got to come close to it. I work out in Smyrna, but. Yeah, I mean, that's where my girlfriend works in Bellevue. And we're looking for, I don't, because I'm from Waverly. You know where Waverly is? It's like in between. I, it's, it's, on, it's on Kentucky Lake, like, you know where Johnsonville is, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I believe it's same that. same county, same county. But I'm just trying to get maybe a little closer to there because I mean I like that area a lot. But anywhere anywhere around Nashville is just it's been blowing up like crazy, and the housing prices have just shot through the roof. Oh man, you're telling me, <laughs> like, <laughs> man, it's just the cookie cutter houses crazy. that they're trying to sell for four hundred thousand dollars. You're like, no way. I feel like they're in, it's just some kind of bubble going on around here. It's about to pop. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, because it's it's gotten ridiculous around here. I mean, like, so, it, these houses I've seen barns with straighter walls than these houses have. <laughs> they just you go down, you look that look down the uh, baseboard, you just see it S curve, and you're like four hundred, three hundred fifty thousand dollar houses. No, <laughs> they ain't even got a garage for me to put my kayak in. <laughs> for, I gotta move out to the country somewhere. I feel you there. I, you know, I live in Chapel Hill. It's a small town yeah, yeah. and everything. But nice. e- even out here, it's you know, prices are uh, yeah, skyrocketed. You're, cl- you're too close to Williams, Williamson County. Yeah. If you, but, even, uh, get, if you even get close to it, the, the, the house goes up. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's really skyrocketed here lately. But yeah. You know, I, I get this is kind of. I guess we got a little sidetrack from fishing there. <laughs> yeah, we did. My bad. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, so you, you, uh, you got any other fishing techniques you like to use that, that you you feel like you're pretty that much I, mastered? That I mastered. I mean, I've mastered basically the shaky head, the Cinco, and the jig. That's basically all I've got mastered. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, tell me a little bit about your shaky head. You know, we hear Brian mm-hmm. Schiller talk about a shaky head all the time. I don't know if I've ever even used a shaky head before. Oh, I mean, a Percy Priest shaky head is money for, for sure. I mean, and a lot of times, because I, I, I never throw a, uh, what, is it, what is the hot thing, the TRD? Uh, a Ned Rig. Ned Rig. I've never thrown a Ned Rig. I just, I don't trust those little bitty hooks or none of that stuff. But uh, I mean, I know there are a lot of people catch fish on them. I basically use the shaky head like a Ned Rig. I, that's what I feel like it is, you know. I basically use it. If I can't catch a fish and I'm having a hard time catching fish, especially in the summertime, I will put on a shaky head and usually that works. I'm not. I don't drop shot that much unless, unless I unless I cannot catch anything. Then I will try to drop shot. See, don't don't knock those thin hooks too much. I I just caught a new PB Smalley yeah. on the Ned rig. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you did. I can't though. I don't know why. <laughs> and you, hey, we uh. Do you use weedless? Because I feel like I get hung up every time. I, 
I don't currently. I that's I want to start using them. See, I was using uh, using it like right up against a rock wall, so I'm like just dropping it off the side of it. Yeah, yeah. But I, I have lost a lot, like trying to fish it around wood structure. Yeah. But but uh, I was gonna say when it comes to small hooks, you know, one of our sponsors, Jig Masters, they make a light wire hook jig, and I got my my PB large mouth off of that. And something about those that's that smaller hook, you know, it's got a smaller diameter. Being in a kayak, you know, it helps you set the hook better on them. Yeah, it's smaller. It yeah, ain't gonna probably, penetrate as good. I have been like I just recently put started putting like light gate light wire up hooks on my A rig too, just because I could pull them out and not stop losing so many A rigs. Yeah, just straighten them out. And yeah. I, that saved me a lot of A rigs here recently. I, I haven't broke out the money for an A rig yet. Those things get high. <laughs> no, if you get one, you better get a lure retriever too or something. <laughs> well, that, that's what I was kind of getting at earlier. Is being in a kayak, man, it's it's hard to lose lures from what I've seen with a kayak. Cause you can go right up there to it, pull it I out. Mean, I mean, you. Yeah, unless you're fishing an A-rig in 15, 20 foot of water and you get hung on a stump, then it can get a little tricky. But. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess it's a little different whenever you fish shallow most of the time. Yeah, and sometimes, like I do. And sometimes no matter what you do, you can't get it off. Even if you have a lure retriever, you can't. It's it's wrapped around two different limbs, two different ways, and it's just gone. Yeah, it, that would hurt my heart a little bit, losing but that, one of those that's, things. <laughs> that's a good tip, though to save people money as a lure retriever and mend it. Both of them will, will pay hey, for, both of them pay for themselves pretty quick. I mean, it, it, anything, if you get a, a football jig hung up in 20 foot of water, you just take your lure retriever, drop down there and it pops it right off. I mean, that's two or $3 you just saved right there. I mean, oh, yeah, crank, they, crank baits, everything. They, they I, definitely pay for themselves within like a few lures. Yeah. I mean, I, I get upset when I don't bring mine and I'm, I pull out a new 5XD and I throw it and it's hung up immediately and I, and I don't have my lure retriever with me. Happens all the time. I can't keep crankbaits. Deep diving crankbaits, I cannot keep them. Man, I, I've never had luck on a crankbait. I've, I've had a couple times where I've really crushed them on a crankbait. I think I've caught one fish ever on a crankbait and that was as soon as it hit the water. So I don't really count that as... <laughs> Yeah, it was, a, it was a top water bite. Yeah, for real. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that mend it stuff you're talking about. As soon as we get off this call, I'm probably gonna look it up online, try to find yeah, it. Would definitely, it definitely work. I mean, it works so well. You can you could glue a rage tail, or like the pincher, back onto a rage crawl, and it would you could throw it back out there. <laughs> That's how good it is. It's not it's not glue it's not glue like super glue doesn't hard it. it it turns into like plastic, like, like what you're using. Now that, that also sounds like a good idea. You know, I make my own football head jigs and you know, I glue the, uh, weed guard in there. Uh, might be, I don't know if it's, you don't think it'd work. No, it's not, it's not strong glue. It's just, it's real soft, like plastic. Okay. It kind of just, it, 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 I don't know. If, I don't know exactly what it does. It kind of. It almost look, looks like it melts the plastic back together. But it's it's not like super glue. Like you touch it, it's not hard when you when it's done. It's 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 like plastic. Okay, so may, maybe that idea is out the door. Yeah. <laughs> now that would probably pull right out. <laughs> hey, well, well, <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. Uh, anything else you want to touch on? Well, about local waters, um, I mean, just Tennessee has a bunch of good local waters. I'd really like to get out there and get one of those big 50 plus stripers here soon. You, you gonna go on a kayak for that? Yeah, heard, of course. Yes, uh, I, I heard it's hard to striper fish on a kayak. Oh, it can't be that. I mean, I it's hard to some... chase them down. Oh, well, yeah, I mean. There's certain areas like they like to hang out around those islands, you know. And and if you're fishing, watch it gets really cold. You go fish the steam plant. You don't really have to chase anything down. Just don't go on the weekends because it's usually packed. 
Now, where's that at? I, I didn't know we had one around here. Oh, it's in Gallatin. Okay. The Gallatin steam plant. Yeah, it's prime time. Um, stripper fishing in the wintertime because that water stays a certain temperature and it seems like every year now somebody's catching the new state record tilapia because they have tilapia in there and they have to i mean they have to go to that warm water discharge to stay alive all right i might, I might have to hit that up this winter i mean yeah but there's everything there's large mouth small mouth strippers everything's congregates in that area yeah that's that's probably definitely going to be a winter trip now. Now that I know about it, I didn't know about that. Yeah, I mean, it's that's a nice place. I still haven't, I haven't got a big rock bass. I still haven't got a musky from you know any of our musky fisheries. That's what that's one thing on my bucket list I got to do. That rock bass, I I caught a pretty good rock bass. I mean, not this ro- summer. Rock fish. What do oh, okay. they call striper? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rock bass, yeah, rock bass. I mean, they're good. They're fun. I didn't. Yeah. I'd never seen one before, so I well, wasn't sure what it was. I, you're talking about I, a red eye, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Duck River's got tons of them in there. Yeah, yeah I caught one. Awesome. I I didn't even realize, you know, what it was or anything. I I looked it up in the little TWRA booklet that they give out each year, and uh, and I figured out what it was and. I, I wish I would have measured mine now because I, I don't think it bro- would have broke state record, but I think it would have been up there close. Yeah, the state record comes out of the Stones River. I think it's also the world record to come out of the Stones River. Really? I doubt there's one in there now that's that big. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think I think the record was like 12 inches or somewhere along those lines. Um, I think I've... I don't know. I'm pretty sure I've caught one 12 inches before. I doubt it's that. You might have had the new state record. No. <laughs> yeah. it, but uh, I, I think the one I caught was probably around 10. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're they're little aggressive uh, fish, and they'll definitely um, trick you a couple of times. And yeah. they'll, they'll, they'll pull a bunch of your painters off your jig, too. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I caught it on. caught it on a yeah. little jig. I've caught Zoom them on. Speaker. I've caught them on hooks as big as five alt. I mean, they'll just. Oh they'll, wow. They'll just take it and swallow it down their little bitty mouths, and I don't. I don't know how they get it. <laughs> hey, that, that's like uh, you know, I've told some people on here, you know, I I caught a like a little bluegill on a whopper plopper. Yeah, I, yeah I've, done, about, I've done the same thing on old, old hickory before. Yeah. <laughs> Like yeah, you, like the wa- whopper plover was about as long as he was. <laughs> yeah, you think you hooked into a like a limb or something, a little stick, and it's a bluegill. If you do that, you just got I lost you for a minute. Nope, not there. You hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. Yeah, you broke up for a minute. But, uh, but yeah, man. Uh, I, I'm pretty much out of questions for you myself. So, unless you got anything else that you want to touch on, uh, we, can start, we can start wrapping it up. That's fine, man. Um, that's about all I got to say. All right, that's cool. Well, well brother, I appreciate you uh, coming on here and talking with me for a little bit. Oh, no yeah. problem. Anytime. Yeah. Yeah, I might be bugging you and be like, hey, take me fishing sometime. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I mean, I'll be going down a duck a lot until middle of January. Yeah. Yeah, so I might, yeah, I might contact you, try to tag along sometime. All right. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, just give me a, give me a shout. We'll go. All right. Uh, do you want to plug social media sponsors, all that good yeah, stuff? Yeah. All my sponsors, um, of course. What I what I do my my fishing in Jackson kayaks, um, Hog Farmer Bait Company, All Pro Rods, and um, and Yak Attack. All those guys are really good companies. I want to shout out your uh, social media. Or oh, my social media. Oh, um, you just follow um, on Instagram at uh, Angler Josh Stewart. That's that's my Instagram tag. I just have a regular Facebook account. You know, just my name. All right, cool. Well, yeah, thanks again, man. And uh, everybody else, hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Tight lines, smooth paddling. Yeah, take care.